So, is live in YYZ better than exit stage left? Rush fans around the world were very excited when they found out that Moving Pictures, the 40th anniversary edition, was coming out. And not only that, a show from the Moving Pictures tour was also going to be featured, included in the box set whether it was the full box set with the vinyl and the CDs or just the CDs, the 40th anniversary of Moving Pictures, a remastered version of that uh, record, and also a show from the tour, from the Moving Pictures tour was gonna be included. That was very exciting. It's a tour that most Rush fans probably would have liked to have seen. If there's a poll listing what tour you would wanna see that you hadn't seen, probably Moving Pictures would be right at the top. Probably Hemispheres would be up there too, I, I think. But moving pictures, definitely, if I could be at that tour, I definitely would want to be there. When I learned about Rush, it was back in 1981, 82. Yeah, it was 81. That's when I discovered Rush. I heard Tom Sawyer for the first time, and that was my favorite song at the time. Still one of my favorite songs. Moving pictures obviously became Rush's best-selling and most popular, most well-known album. And... Whether some people like it or not, <laughs> it's probably their best album. We all have our favorites, us Rush fans do, but definitely Moving Pictures is the most well-known. has seven songs, and they're pretty much all hits. Incredible uh, musicianship. Um, the, the boys at the time, in their late 20s now, uh, 27, 28 years old, were really coming into their own as far as their songwriting ability, and it really showed on this record. So that's why their tour for that record exploded and you know they became more popular than they ever had been probably late much much later in their career towards the end i think they may have reached that popularity you know reaching out to people that have not heard of them because of youtube and reactors and stuff like that but yeah moving pictures uh, set the mold for them and that was an amazing time and Exit Stage Left, which uh, chronicled a couple of nights during the Moving Pictures tour. You know, it was a fan favorite. It is a fan favorite. It's one of my favorite performances of live Rush music. The vinyl version of Exit Stage Left came out first. Then the video came out on MTV. And they weren't exactly the same songs. So the shows were, if you combine the the vinyl or C, the CD later, and then the VHS or the show on MTV and later DVD. These were a couple of nights from that tour and we had that for the longest time. Great show. But now with the 40th anniversary release of Moving Pictures, they've included a whole show. Actually, it's two shows. If you look at the liner notes from the 40th anniversary pamphlet, it is a couple of nights this 40th anniversary. Some people that bothers, but it didn't bother me because the exit stage, le exit stage left performances that we have come to know and love are also from a couple of nights. And if you compare the vinyl slash CD with the video of Exit Stage Left, really the only song that is exactly the same on both is Red Barchetta. I guess that one was so good that they just decided to keep it on both formats, or all the formats. But in this case, for the 40th anniversary, it it's covers a couple of nights. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's still them during the tour. So the question now is, how is it? How does live in YYZ live up to the exit stage left standard. And a lot of people want to say which, which one is better. Um, I'm actually not going to go there exactly. I'm not going to say which one is better per se. I think they're, you know, two sides of the same coin. It is the same tour and one is a little bit earlier than the other. The live in YYZ, I believe is a little earlier than the exit stage left shows. They were both made with a different purpose. Exit stage left is it's well produced. Um, I think they knew they were going to make a live recording made available later to the public. And it seems like when Rush, the, when they knew that they were going to have a show or shows of the tour that were going to be later produced live, like, like for example, or released live for the public, uh, for example, All the World's a Stage back in 1976, and uh, Exit Stage Left, A Show of Hands. Uh, you know, and subsequent live recordings. I think when they knew they were going to be <laughs> presented later to the public, they were really on. They were very careful. I mean, they, they knew where they could take certain liberties so that they can 
and still not mess up basically even though it was they messed up on occasion but for the most part when they knew they were going to make their show available for the public later they were pretty spot on for those and then if you hear bootlegs of the same tour and you hear other releases um, you see that they're a little more looser right? they take a little more liberties as far as their the way they play Getty the way he sings and it, it is apparent here for example exit stage left is very polished and it's not like i don't think to me it's overproduced as some people have said if you could take for example uh, another band kiss kiss alive one that was very overproduced to the to the point where um they couldn't the band could not use the show they wanted to use to make the live recording alive which what became a live one so actually replayed in the studio parts so that it would sound good um Rush didn't need to do that. You know, they may have touched up things here and there, obviously, because it, you, you do that when you're going to put something to the public. But those were actual performances, and that's how good they sounded. I don't think the live in YYZ shows were meant, were, were they didn't play thinking that it was going to be made, be made available to the public uh, sometime later. We just happened to be fortunate that they did make it available another night on the tour. And it makes us fans that have wanted to be at that tour kind of have a glimpse kind of feel like we were there and actually the sound of live in yyz if you play it loud on a very good system or really good headphones you can it sounds like you're at the concert it sounds really good in that regard so i think if you're going to compare yyz live in yyz to exit stage left i think that exit stage left is just a more polished production uh, to be made available to the general public and you know pretty flawless and those were pretty flawless performances when Rush mentioned that they there were certain nights in a tour that were like really good and it only happened like maybe once or twice in a tour exit stage left those nights were those nights in that tour live in YYZ I think was close but it wasn't as perfect let's say as exit stage left although there are many gems many gems in that concert and we're going to go over it in, in a bit but live in yyz is more like if you're actually there if you actually went to that show and you you know from beginning to end it's fantastic fantastic uh production as far as how the players played alex lifeson is pretty much alex lifeson in y live in yyz and exit stage left pretty close i think it was a tad better in, in the exit stage left shows but you know very slightly giddy lee and he was he was a beast he, <laughs> he was uh i think he took f uh, more liberties in the live in yyz show than in the exit stage left shows but you know equally as fantastic and i want to mention um uh, you know the third guy in the band neil peart man um he was an absolute beast in live in yyz uh, I know how good of a player he is. We all know how good of a player he was, but he was so spot on. His drums were, I mean, the Tama sound, the brand Tama that everyone loved of that time, you know, perfectly on display. He was very precise. It seemed like he played like that every every night of that tour. I mean, he he knew his parts. He played them, and he was very aggressive, very strong. Remember, these guys are in their late 20s, uh, Alex and Getty, 27, and Neil is 28, so... You know, they're just kids, basically, really smart kids. And Neil played those drums and hit them really, really hard, but really precise. He was pinpoint accurate. Uh, there were a couple of flubs here and there. And because I'm a drummer, I noticed those things, but nothing significant at all. You know, most people won't notice. But their performance was absolutely stunning. I mean, these guys really, you know, genius musicians at such a young, such a young age. I would say also that the overall sound of Exit Stage Left is a little better than the overall sound of Live in YYZ. I had to turn up the treble and bass just a little bit on my system to actually make it sound, you know, a little bit better. But for Exit Stage Left, I don't really need to do that. But not that it sounded bad. It, it just sounded like I needed a little help there. But, you know, it's meant to be played loud. Like, I've heard it in my system at home and I've also heard it in my car and just cranked it up. And, you know, it's very satisfying. <laughs> Just having the sense that you're there, hearing them play songs live that you've, 
you never thought you'd see them play or hear them play. Um, but not just them playing the songs and you hearing them, but you feeling like you're at a Rush concert and a concert from the early days, from the moving pictures days when it was, you know, way over the top uh, popularity, but it didn't seem to phase them. They still, you know, played exceptionally well, technically precise, uh, Getty singing. Well, it was re really on display. He had his full range and, you know, we'll talk about it in a couple of the songs that we're going to talk about. But yeah, his he was completely flexible, no problems with his voice singing anything at all. It was spectacular. And actually, his singing on Exit Stage Left is is better than in Live in YYZ. Again, because I think that they knew that for the nights that they knew were going to be made available to the general public later, they knew that they had to keep the rain in, <laughs> rain it in a little bit, but still. Uh, produced a, a technically excellent show. And, you know, live in YYZ, I don't think they expected that to be made public, but we're glad it has been. So what I want to do now is just to go through the song list, um, the set list of live in YYZ, and compare the songs to the Exit Stage Left version and see which one I think is better after hearing everything a bunch of times. I've gone over the songs a bit, and I've made some notes, and I got, got made a bunch of notes here, you know, just uh, so I didn't forget anything. So uh, bear with me because I got I had to put the glasses back on. So I have, uh, you know, I made the list of all the songs of the show, and then if the songs appeared in the Exit Stage Left vinyl and CD, and also if they appeared in the Exit Stage Left uh, video version, and you know, some of these only appeared in one. You know, one instance, so we'll talk about that a little bit too. 2112, it starts off uh, live in YYZ, the overture in the Temples of Syrinx. Man, what a treat. And the fact that, again, Getty's, Getty Lee's voice is soaring and with, you know, no inhibitions. I mean, he had the full vocal range just to hear that sung at that time and the way they played it so, so aggressively and so hard hitting. Just a sight to behold. And, you know, for the ears, uh, a delight. They played Free Will next. And that song is, appears on all of the versions, uh, you know, of the releases. And I actually think that the live in YYZ version is the best of the three. Yeah, I think they took certain liberties, especially during the solo. The soloing part where all three of them are soloing, especially Getty Lee. I think that version just puts it a little over the top for the three. So I think that one is the best one. Limelight, the best version would be on the Exit Stage Left video. It's just, it just seemed that it was, it was tighter played. Getty Lee sang it better. And even the drum fills, uh, Neil changed them, or maybe he forgot <laughs> to play certain fills at certain times in Limelight in the Live in YYZ uh, version. But the Exit Stage Left video version, that's the top. Then we go to Cygnus X1 Book 2, Hemispheres, Prelude. Man, uh, of course, that's just available on you know, live in YYZ. It's a mature version. Uh, it's just so, it's, the sound is so solid and they're playing it so, pr I'm, I'm telling you, like the whole CD is like this. There's very few mistakes that they do. They play with such intent and they're really right on the beat. Not, but not only are they right on the beat, but also many times during the show, they slow down and speed up a little bit the tempo, but all three of them are on it. I mean, they're not, they don't lose each other at any time. And it's just, you know, made the music breathe more, which, you know, I don't, very few bands, I, I, I think, are able to pull something like that off the way they play their songs. Beneath, Between, and Behind uh, is found on Live in YYZ and on the vinyl and CD of Exit Stage Left. And I think uh, on Exit Stage Left, that was on Side 2, and Side 2, I believe, was from the Permanent Waves Tour. So those songs on Side 2 of Exit Stage Left, Permanent Waves Tour, but I think the Beneath, Between, and Behind from Live in YYZ trumps it. It's it's the best version. Now we have the Camera Eye. This was a treat because there were very few live versions of the Camera Eye. I think we only had the one from the Time Machine tour. And this one is is better. because It's it's almost a rep, exact replica of the studio version. And I actually think still the studio version is ever so slightly better than even this live version in YYZ. I mean, that, that studio version of the camera eye is just an absolute classic. It's so flawless. This live version is the best live version of this song, in my opinion. 
but yeah, it's it's almost or may it could be as good as the studio version, but it, it's a, it's at worst it's almost as good, very close. But the camera eye live here is is fantastic. A YYZ came next and very close to the exit stage left version. Um, the solo is a little bit different, and Neil tended to rearrange certain parts of his solos during a tour. And in fact, this solo included the, the single stroke roll crossover pattern that he does. He did it in the live, live in YYZ solo, but he did not do it in the exit stage left solo. But I think the exit stage left version of YYZ is better because no flaws in it. It's just tighter. And actually, there's, Neil didn't play it the drum part at the end of the song, the last second. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but anyway, the YYZ version in Exit Stage Left, I think is the top version there. Bruins Bane, opener to what we knew as side three from the vinyl of Exit Stage Left, which had Bruins Bane, The Trees, and Xanadu. The live in YYZ version is shorter, but he probably didn't play that song the same every night anyway. But the Exit Stage Left version from the vinyl and CD is the best version of Bruins Bane, because it's longer. Yeah, but this shorter version is actually pretty good too. The trees, uh, there are actually a few mistakes in this one that the guys did, a few, but so I'll give the version on the vinyl and CD, the top top billing here, even better than the one on the video, uh, because there's a certain drum pattern at the end of the song that Neil does, it just sounds better than, um, than the other two versions from the uh, video of Exit Stage Left and live in YYZ. And Neil Peart dro drops his sticks during the song. I know because I'm a drummer and I could tell. During the Alex Lifeson solo, that's when he does it, but that's neither here nor there. Now, Xanadu, very interesting version here. I think the version from the CD and vinyl is ever so slightly the best version. Um, it's I think it's a little better than the version on the Exit Stage Left video, ever so slightly better. And it's definitely better than the one on Live in YYZ. Now it's interesting the way Getty sounds vocally in Live in YYZ is very similar to what he sounded like in A Farewell to Kings. So I think it's it's a very interesting version of Xanadu. It I mean, it sounds like exit, the Exit Stage Left version for the most part, but the way he sings it, it's reminiscent of the way he sang it on the original on A Farewell to King, so it's definitely worth worth a listen. The Spirit of Radio, I mean, it's a toss-up between this version and the version from the Exit Stage Left CD. I mean, they're both really good. Red Barchetta, they're very close. Again, I, I think the Exit Stage Left version tops it. I think mainly because Getty Lee sings it better, uh, slightly better, in the Exit Stage Left version. So I think the ESL, takes that cake. Closer to the heart, uh, again, this is a case where we have the live version from the Exit Stage Left DVD or video and the vinyl, they're two separate. The one on the vinyl is from the Permanent Waves tour and the one on the CD on the video is, you know, it's from the Moving Pictures tour. And then we have the YYZ version from, <laughs> the version from Live in YYZ. I don't know which one is the best. I really don't. I think probably, yeah, I don't know. They're all good. Then we have Tom Sawyer, <laughs> and they introduced, you know, I like that they introduced their songs from moving pictures, which, you know, in later tours, these songs were so popular, they never introduced them, they just started playing them. But I think the best version of this song is on the Exit Stage Left vinyl slash CD, uh, because of the ending. The way they end it there is better than the way they end it on the ESL video or live in YYZ. That's, I just think it's better. Vital Signs, that's a nice surprise. I mean, they released it, they pre-released it before, I mean, on YouTube, before uh, we got the, the anniversary box set. And I almost didn't know or remember that they played Vital Signs. I actually didn't know they played every song from Moving Pictures except the, uh, Witch Hunt. Vital Signs was, man, that's like machine gun precision. I mean, these guys were really spot on playing that. I'm, I was very happy that they played Vital Signs. Uh, Natural Science, man. Uh, this is a jewel. Now we have several live versions of Natural Science. I decided to hear the live version from the Permanent Waves uh, release that was uh, a couple of years ago. And then I heard this one. And then obviously we have subsequent versions from different different stages and, and later tours. I actually think that this version from the Live in YYZ uh, Moving Pictures tour is the best one of all of them. If you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. That one is the best one. Working Man. The medley. I didn't know that so far back, uh, Rush was playing 
<laughs> working man like uh, like reggae. I guess I mean, I guess the police had a really huge influence more than I thought on these guys. So yeah, that was very interesting. And then they go into Cygnus X One, Book Two, Hemispheres Armageddon, and um, yeah, just flawless, absolutely flawless. Just the the big sound that Rush had on this tour, the three guys. There was so much noise. But it was, you know, organized chaos. It was organized noise. The three of them just producing this massive sound and just being able to play precisely uh, these songs. And, you know, Hemispheres, pretty much everybody loves. And the fact that, you know, I've always said that the best versions of Rush songs live are um, the tour of when the song comes out and maybe one or two tours, tours later. Those are the best versions of songs. I mean, these versions of Hemispheres, these uh, parts of Hemispheres that they played on this night <laughs> and on this tour, I mean, just absolutely flawless. By tour and the Snow Dog, I mean, it's pretty good. Any Everywhere you hear it, I mean, it's just uh, fantastic. In the end, I think on Exit Stage Left video is the best version. The way Alex plays, plays the guitar, uh, plays his solo, he has a little twangy uh, thing there that he does there that I think makes it interesting. Um, but they're pretty much the same, but I think the Exit Stage Left video version is is the best part, uh, it, the best one. In the mood, it's a toss-up between Live and YYZ and the ESL video. 2112, the grand finale, one of my favorite semi-instrumentals, I'm going to call it, because it's part of the suite. And the way they jam out at the end, one of my favorite jam outs in all of rock history. I don't know exactly which would be better, the Exit Stage Left version or the Live and YYZ Again, I think I'm going to pick the exit stage left version yet again. It's just slightly better. Yeah, I think it's just ever so, ever so better, so much better than uh, Live in YYZ. Then we have La Villa Strangiato. Wow. There are a lot of good versions of this, of this song. I've always contended that the exit stage left version of La Villa Strangiato is the best version of all. And then now I hear one from another night, Live in YYZ. Um, this one has a few little additions there at the beginning. It's it's practically as good. I mean, I don't know if I were to show or play this to someone, I'd have a hard time picking which one. I think I ultimately would end up going back to the exit stage left version. But yeah, it just it sounds a little bit more raw live in YYZ. It so, sounds a little bit more like you're there, which makes it a little bit more. Um, exciting. So yeah, La Via Strangiato, any way you hear it, it's awesome. So there are a couple of, th I'll kind of call them throwaways on A Passage to Bangkok and Jacob's Ladder. They were on the Exit Stage Left CD and vinyl uh, releases. And again, they were on the side two of the vinyl from a Permanent Waves tour. They sounded fantastic. I mean, it's unfortunate that they didn't appear in the Moving Pictures tour, but you know, you can't play everything. So yeah, that's my song by song comparison of what songs were better on, you know, Live in YYZ versus Exit Stage Left vinyl slash CD versus Exit Stage Left video. And I'm doing it just for fun. It almost doesn't matter. I mean, we have four nights at least of Rush live music from the Moving Pictures tour because there's a couple of nights from the Exit Stage Left recordings and then a couple of nights from the Live in YYZ recordings. And like I said, it's just two sides of the same coin. Uh, we're talking one which, you know, better production, Exit Stage Left, because I think they knew they were going to make it available to the public. And then you have Live in YYZ, which is just a night that was recorded, not necessarily to be released to the public, but, you know, so many years later, you have the Moving Pictures anniversary. And let's see what show we can pick from that tour to release with moving pictures. And, and this is an absolute gem. The other thing that's pretty cool is that, you know, Terry Brown uh, is a producer or he mixed it. I don't remember which one I'll have to. Maybe I'll, I'll note here uh, next to me what he did. Uh, I think he produced and mixed it. But in any case, it sounds like Terry Brown had something to do with um, the production of, of Live in YYZ. And that's good. That, you know, we all love Terry Brown. Just like the members of the band thought he was a fourth member of a, of the band, so so did we. So you know, every record that he was involved in, you know, produced by Rush and Terry Brown, you know, it was a given that was going to be an excellent recording, um, excellent songs, and we're we're very glad that Terry was involved in the making of Live in YYZ. So ultimately, what do I think of Live in YYZ? Um, every Rush fan should should have it. 
<laughs> I did an unboxing of the CD version uh, of the CDs uh, that I got from the from the box set. Since I'm not so much a fan of vinyl, I didn't get the whole thing. I didn't really need all of that. So if you want to be a part of a tour that you've always wanted to be a part of, all you Rush fans who learned about Rush in later years, this is your chance. You're going to absolutely love it. There's no reason not to have it. You could probably stream it too. I'm not sure. I haven't even looked that up. I'm sure you can. In any case, worst case scenario, get the CDs and, and listen to them. And you'll be... A fan all over again and if you're one of these rush fans that you know you've not you've gotten away from hearing rush for you know whatever reason you know perfectly acceptable this may be a good time to rediscover them I think uh, you may even fall in love with them again because you're gonna see you're gonna remember their youthful passion uh, for playing exceptionally complex but very satisfying music, not overly progressive. They still had these odd time signatures that you could still tap your feet to. Not like some bands that you can't tap your feet. You just got to stand there and, <laughs> and listen to them because, yeah, you know, even may sound good, but you don't know what they're doing. But with Rush, it was very pleasing to the ear, the way they weaved in and out of time signatures. And most of the time, uh, a lot of the times you just didn't notice. It just sounded so good. So that's my review of Live in YYZ. I did a whole review and analysis of Xanadu from Exit Stage Left. If you want to look at that, click on this video. And if you want to see how my wife reacted to live in YYZ, click this video over here. This is Omar from All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.